long ago in the beautiful kingdom of Hyrule surrounded by mountains and forests. Legends told of an omnipotent and omniscient golden power that resided in a hidden land. Many people aggressively sought to enter the hidden golden land. But no one ever returned. One day, evil power began to flow from the Golden Land. So the king commanded seven wise men to seal the gate to the land of the Golden Power. The seal should have remained for all time. When these events were obscured by the mists of time, Aganim came to break the seal. I think I misread that. Hey everybody, it's Nintuba64. Just gonna finish reading the story intro. A mysterious wizard known as Aganim came to Hyrule to release the seal. He eliminated the good king of Hyrule. Through evil magic, he began to make descendants of the, of the seven wise men vanish, one after another. And the time of the destiny for the princess Zelda is drawing near. Hey everybody, it's Nintuba64 here, and now that you've sat through that story intro and know what the crap is going on, welcome to my Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This is my favorite two-dimensional Zelda game. Actually, it used to be. Now it's A Link Between Worlds, because that game is so freaking good. And I'm just gonna start a new player. And if you can't tell, my name is Ryan. Yup. But it's not my first name, so you won't be able to find me. Unless you look at people whose middle initial is R. And has this lovely voice. Anyways, there's more text. Help me. Please help me. I am a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zelda. The wizard, Aganim, has done something to the other missing girls. Now only I remain. Aganim has seized control of the castle, and is now trying to open the Seven Wise Men's seal. I'm in the dungeon of the castle. Please, help me. Well, that was our uncle saying, Yeah, I'm going to the castle. Stay here. What I'm wondering is, do the uncle and Link take shifts sleeping? Because there's only one bed. And you can get the lantern there. Or lamp, whatever the game wants to call it. You gotta go to its canon name. So, we're going to do naturally what any rebellious teenager would do. Yes, in this game, Link is a teenager. And disobey him. But we don't want to get caught, so we can't go through the front entrance. So when you go up to the castle, you're going to want to head north, east and then head north and find a well that is overgrown with flat. It, it makes sense if you don't think about it, aka it doesn't make any sense. But when you fall down there... You're going to softly land, even though it looks like you fell like 30 feet. And now, this is just your uncle saying, I told you not to come. But, since you have, here's a stabby thing and a shieldy thing. Use the stabby thing with a B button. And the shieldy thing is automatically used. And just go in this room and head east to get a blue rupee, which is worth five. Five rupees is chicken squat. Or not, really, chicken squat. Chicken Scratch. It's worth squat because it's Chicken Scratch. But every single one counts, even the lowly green rupee, because the denominations are green rupee equals one blue rupee, rupee equals five red rupee equals twenty. Now that that's out of the way, let's enter the castle, which is the first half dungeon of the game. By half dungeon, I mean later, after you've done three real dungeons, this will become a full dungeon. But for now, you only need to complete half of it. 
Um, when you enter, you're going to want to head east, and this, then go as north as far as you can until you come to the stairs, then head west. You're going to want to head to the door in the center of that room, and head north from it, and defeat the enemies, or not enemies, enemy in this room, with your sword. Because that's all you have to kill things. Anyways, you're going to get the map. Maps are useful. They help you find places. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, don't hit me. Anyways, as you can tell right there, if you press the B button and hold it, you'll start charging it. I don't do that very often. I mean, it's useful. But, uh, it's so useful I like not relying on it. And, eh, uh, don't kill me. Anyways, just, I'm actually defeating this guy instead of just running from him because there is a recovery cart. As opposed to a heart container, which is a permanent upgrade. Heart containers are always preferable to recovery hearts. And... Yeah, that's about it. So let's see, uh, I'm out of stuff to talk about. I know, I'll start doing a common question of the day. I know I should probably do this at the end of the episode, but I've decided I care about you guys and what you guys think. So I'm going to have a question every day. Just, there's no right or wrong answers. Well, there will be for some of them. Just ask a question and you guys answer in the comments. So, for this question... What is evil? Yes, that is my question. What is evil? Define evil in your own words. Say what you think it is, and elaborate. This is completely optional. You can just watch the video, hit that like button, and leave. Or not hit that like button, because I suck at commentary. But if you want to participate, just answer. And if it's what you truly believe, spread your wisdom. And now we're entering the first mini-boss of the game. Sorry for that tangent. You're just going to want to stun with your boomerang, run up, beat him a couple of times with your sword, then run back before he spins his pain around him. Which looks really painful if it hits you. And you're going to get the big key, as it says right there. I know in some Zelda games it's boss key, in some games it's big key. Now Zelda's just all like, hey, I was trapped. Do you need me to repeat what I said? Okay, grab another blue rupee, and I think I'm going to break one of those pots because they usually contain hearts. And by usually, I mean all the freaking time. Not every pot, just those pots specifically. I wonder if anyone's ever made a pot joke in Zelda about how it could be considered marijuana and Link's addicted to it, because breaking is the same thing as sma, uh, probably not. Another happy thing, I'm actually recording this at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. If you're wondering, how are you able to record on a weekday at 11? Well, people in my state are wimps, so apparently three inches of snow is enough to get out of high school. I know, doesn't make any sense at all. Eh, I like the cold, quite frankly. I enjoy it a good bit. Because, well... The cold is the one time when I can wear a toboggan without people thinking, Hey, stop wearing a toboggan, you freak. I don't even wear toboggans for warmth. I just like how comfortable they are. I wear them over my glasses, and they kind of obscure my field of vision, but they actually make it smaller so I can focus on things better. But that's off subject. And if you can't tell, I'm heading back to the entrance room of the castle once I got Zelda, because we're going to have to go do something else. And at the beginning, I went right. I went right this time, too. But you could go left from the very beginning. The rooms are very similar. It's really inconsequential which way you go. But in case you feel like being slightly different, that's what you can do. Now she's just telling us that let's go north. As opposed to south, east, or west. And, if, and another thing, if you can't tell, I'm not going to say go up or go left or go right or go down. I'm gonna say the directions of the compass, and my cat is meowing. Look what she's doing. Eh, she'll be fine. And you're just going to want to push this to the side. And yes, I can push things while checking on my cat. Kitty! Oh, kitty. No, don't do that. Ah, oh, cat, you made me get hit. Anyways, she's a kitty, so it's okay. Uh, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. No, that's not the comic question of the day. Don't tell me how you're doing. 
Tell me what is evil. And I'm sorry if my cat is being loud on the mic. She's so cute, though. I can't just tell her to leave. I could, but that would that would hurt me more than it would hurt her. Because she's a cute kitty. She's a friendly kitty. And most of all, loyal. I mean, I'm more of a dog person. But she's a loyal cat, and I know that because when we took her home from my mother's office, my mom's a therapist, and some of the people who were kind of in the apartments near there that are her patients, they were saying, oh, I'm going to cook that cat and eat it. So my mom was like, I don't want none of that. So she took her home, and she's now a sweet kitty. Or she was already sweet. Um, But you really know they trust you when for pretty much three times a week for the first year we had her, she would without fail bring us something like a mouse or sometimes even something bigger like a raccoon. I know it's stuff that we generally don't eat, but really it's the thought that counts. And she's such a sweet baby. Just rubbing up against my legs while I'm playing me some video games. And now that we're in the sewers, it's very dark. We've actually been in the sewers for a while, but I was on a tangent, so I wasn't able to tell you guys that without sounding stupid because I'm talking about my cat and I'm changing the subject without actually finishing talking about my cat, so I come back to that. Anyways, I'm kind of doing that now, so I'm a hypocrite. And... Hey, kitty. Right now, she's on my back. And, uh, and we need to pull the switch on the right. If you pull the switch on the left, it will drop a bunch of ropes. And not really ropes, but snakes. But they're called ropes. And now I have a kitty in my lap. Hey, kitty. And when you get out here, apparently that one doesn't need to be pushed. You're going to come to the priest, and he's going to be all like, Oh, crap. Well, the feces has hit the fan. You're going to need to go do some stuff. But first, go to Kakariko Village. And that is what we will do next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. See you guys next episode. But first, we're getting the heart container. Bye!